Welcome to this, the fourth of four videos on how to do defensive programming. My name's Andy Wicks, and in this video, we're going to look at some really useful techniques that you can use to program defensively. Here, you can see some code. First of all, there are a couple of imports that we're going to need. If you're using PyCharm, you can install date utils, that's with an S, for the date validation. We're also going to import OS, which handles the operating system. Later on, we're going to need a method to validate dates, but I'll look at that when we get to that point. First, we're going to run some code. This code will not work. The plus sign usually means either addition or put two strings together. In this line, what we've got is a string and an integer. What we should have is the line below. In other words, we should change the type of the integer into a string. Let me run this and you'll see what I mean. As you see, it gives a type error, and a type error means you can't do this with this type of data. But if I comment out this line and then run the code again, well, now everything works exactly as expected, and I get Andy 3. Choosing the correct type for what you're doing matters. You also want to check that the format of the data that you're using is correct. So, for example, name 27 Dr. Yasmin Arafa uh, should work out fine. But if we print it, it looks awful. What we need to do is to make sure that the first letters are all uppercase. So we use the dot title function. And that now makes things look better. But what happens if we ask for name zero and the type of that and the type of that character? Let's see what happens. As you can see, it says Dr. Yasmin Arafa in lowercase. That doesn't look good. But now we've got the uppercase incorrect. That's fine. And it tells us that the first character, character zero, is an integer. That's fine. Because we've turned it into an integer. But what happens? If I change this to a 5, if I run this now, as you can see, it's fallen over with a value error. And that's because it can't do the integer version of the sixth character, which in this case is a dot. The next block of code looks to see whether a date that the user has entered is valid. So let me try this out. What it says is that the first five versions of date are all valid, but the last one, March the 42nd, that is not valid because there is no 42nd of March. And there are all sorts of other things that you could try out. So how did I get that validate date? Well, that was that function at the top. And here it's just a try except the sort of things that we've seen in other parts of this mini series. The return returns two values. Either this is a date, in which case it returns the date itself. So as you can see from the first one, it says that the first one was true and returns my birthday, 24th of March, 1934. But the second one, well, it does that if the date is not valid, if we have a value error. And so if we have the 42nd of March, well, that's not a valid date. So it returns an error, but the program does not fall over. It merely tells us that this is false. We're picking up two values with that return, either true or false, and either the date or the fact that this is invalid. This allows the programmer to see what has worked and what hasn't. Now, supposing I change that code slightly. What I'm going to do is to be a typically dyslexic Andy. I meant to type in March, but I've got Marach. Let's try that. The code hasn't fallen over, but it does say Marach is false. Our program doesn't fall over. This is definitely a good thing. And the final thing we're going to look at is to see whether paths and files exist. Often you need to check that in your program. So we might have something like path equals C colon temp. Notice the double slash because the first slash would be an escape character. So if I want the temp 
directory, I have to use a double slash. And then I want to see if in C colon temp, there is a file called temp.txt. Now on my system, there is a directory on the C drive called temp. But in that directory, there isn't a temp.txt. So when I run this, what I get is true because the path exists, but false because the file does not. And this allows me to check whether something is there before I try and do whatever it is with that something. That's good defensive programming. I hope these techniques help you and give you ideas for other techniques that you can create.